Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of the My Tech Story Africa podcast. My name is Alice Kanjojo, your lovely host, and today we are diving into insights from Arnold Pizera, who is an entrepreneur and the current communications manager at Norsken House, Kigali. Arnold's diverse background includes anchoring for CNBC Africa, co-hosting Kigali in the morning on Royal FM, and sports anchoring on Rwandan television. The conversation today dealt into the practical aspects of entrepreneurship, from crafting marketing plans to perfecting a two-minute elevator pitch. Arnold emphasizes addressing fundamental elements often overlooked in business development. We also get into Norskin's mission with a deep dive into Norskin Africa Week that happened in November 2023. This is a platform that brought together investors and entrepreneurs to foster deal flows and support startups. To give you more insights on Norskin, Norskin is a non-profit impact ecosystem where entrepreneurs can find everything they need to make saving the world their business. They also run award-winning Norskin house hubs in Stockholm, Sweden, Kigali, and soon Barcelona, Spain. Back to Arnold, reflecting on his role at CNBC, he shares insights on persistence, especially in the entrepreneurial space. Lastly, he also hosts the podcast Startups and Fuckups by Norskin at the Norskin House, Kigali. During my time in Kigali, this was one of the best tech hubs that I have ever been to, especially in East Africa and arguably across Africa. So if you're in the tech landscape, this should definitely be in the bucket list of places you need to visit as a tech entrepreneur. The episode concludes with Arnold offering advice to aspiring entrepreneurs, stressing resilience and gratitude for life's blessings. He highlights self-betting, continuous improvement, avoiding revenge and fostering positive energy and good vibes as keys to overcoming mediocrity. For those who are watching this on YouTube, we did encounter some issues when it came to production for this particular episode, which is sad to say, but the content in itself is absolutely phenomenal. Arnold was one of my best guests this season. I know I say that every episode, but really and truly, I did enjoy this episode recording and Arnold has so much knowledge that he had to share on this particular episode. So I hope you still stay tuned in and... Just expect that during the first half of the episode, there may not be any visuals to show. And for the last part of the episode, the visuals are there, but they just may not be in focus. But I still do hope you enjoy the episode. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure that you follow My Tech Story Africa on all the social media platforms. And please do this because it helps the podcast grow and reach the right audiences that we want it to get to, as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel, as well as our audio listening platforms that include Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of the major listening platforms that you listen to your podcasts. Also check out our website at mtsafrica.co and join our community where you'll get first-hand information on what's going on in the tech landscape in Africa and arguably across the world. With that being said, let's get into the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of the My Tech Story Africa podcast. And today is no different than any other day because we have an amazing guest joining us today. We are still at the Norsken House here at Kigali, and we needed to bring someone in to just share more about this space, what they do, and more beyond just their story, just if this might be something that you're interested in. So today we are joined by Arnold Quizera, who's going to give us all that information as well as his story. So Arnold, I would love you to introduce yourself to our audience and we can take it away from there. Uh, I always find it hard introducing oneself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, I'm Arnold. Uh, I'm the ecosystem lead for Norskin uh, East Africa, Norskin Africa. And uh, welcome to Roskin, first of all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's welcome. been a very lovely space. I don't think we Love have it. anything like this in Nairobi. So we, we have small kind of places, but yeah. a huge tech hub like this one yeah. that is still in construction with another on side. It's not something that I've ex I've seen before. We're trying so. to build Africa's biggest setup hub. Uh, there's something mm. similar in Morocco. There's something uh, similar in Morocco. Almost as big. Oh, wow. um, and innovation, It's uh, I think it's in within Marrakesh. Mm -hmm. But uh, not in the magnitude of uh what we're trying to do here, uh, mm. a hub, a one-stop shop for everything to do with the startup ecosystem. So we're talking about having LPs, uh, GPs, VC yeah. funds, mm. uh, to um, having investors, uh, accelerator programs. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, you know, we have, on average, we have 1,056 people that walk through the gates of this place wow. every day uh, who are walking from here. But uh, we have more than 1,100 members uh, signed up monthly uh, who use this space. Um, more than 290 companies 
Some of them are as small as a one briefcase company. Uh, others are being big enough to be 20, 30 people. And we've had our own members who have graduated out of the space. So they came into the space as mm -hmm. a one person, two people company. And we've seen them grow into a 30 people company. Oh, wow. And we no longer have space for them here. So they graduate to bigger to spaces. Bigger spaces. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, which uh, in a way, uh, shows always oh, a proof of concept, mm -hmm. and that's and that's what we are as a country in Rwanda. We are uh, a proof of concept hub. You know, come be a big fish in a small pond, then you can play uh, with bigger fish with in other bigger ponds. Fish in other ponds. Wow, I love. First of all, just the aura of this place is just people building some amazing products, and to hear about people starting from scratch and building, you know, more than a team of 30 people is something that is not a small feat. So no, not at um, all. kudos to you guys and what you're building here. And I think I, my kudos next... Kudos to that Norskin team. <laughs> to the Norskins yeah, team, Yeah, I know yes. work with an amazing um, group uh, team, a very small team. But uh, yeah, uh, everyone backs up everyone. You have to be a kind of a jack mm, of all trades. Of course. So everyone jumps into everyone's work. Uh, yeah, and we, uh, we know that the mission is bigger than us. It's bigger than an individual. It's we are building for the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, the African Free Continental Trade Area Agreement is here mm -hmm. as well. So what what is that agreement? So the FCFTA. Uh, this was uh, twenty seventeen. So very similar to the EU mm -hmm. um, agreement, whereby you know um, Alice can easily move from one place to another with no extra hindrances, taxes, permits. You mm -hmm. know. Mm. Um, oh, uh, so it's it's it came into uh, agreement was signed in 2017, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, uh, came into uh, inception last year mm -hmm. with Rwanda and Ghana being the first countries mm -hmm. uh, to trade under it. And basically, what that does, or what the opportunity there is, um, an Arnold can move from one place from Kigali to Nairobi. And there, I don't have to pay maybe extra taxes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goods are not taxed extra, right? Yeah. Services. So it brings about that economic uh, unity that mm. we badly, badly need as a continent. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And how many countries would you say are represented here at Norskin? Uh, Norskin, oof, good question. Never thought about it. <laughs> You've never thought about it. Never thought about it. it. But uh, uh, is your main focus, um, you know, Kigali people, Rwandese street citizens, or are you also welcoming people from different parts of Africa or the world in general? Uh, the world in general, but we have uh, so many people from different parts of, of Africa, Zim, South Africa, mm -hmm. Kenya, Uganda, mm -hmm. Tanzania, uh, Burundi, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire. Wow. Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Egypt, Tunisia. So, okay, so <laughs> Liberia. Goes far yeah, way. so it's it's yeah. We have a very very integrated mixed community uh, that actually given me an idea like a wave your flag idea kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> wave your flag, African yeah. representation. Because even when I was interacting with you prior to this interview, is what I did love about you is the Pan Africanism that you you really stand for, and I think I also want to get a bit more into that, which also makes me want to get more about your story. So, I don't know, how did you get here uh, at Norskin? You know, how did you even get an interest in working in tech? Is your background? I, I I know is not in tech, so no. it's in communications and PR. So what was the journey to get to where you so are today? I went to school for QE, quantitative economics. Mm -hmm. So uh, Where was this back in? So no, so this is in SA. In SA. Yeah, okay. uh, UKZN, shout out to UKZN. Uh, <laughs> <Dublin> people. So <laughs> um, basically what one thought would think, I w I, you have to end up in a banking hall or, or something of, of that sort. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I always had a passion for media. Uh, I was always uh, in a media space from a very, very young age. And so when I moved to Rwanda, which was, um, by, I'll say, I didn't think I would be here for long. So my mm -hmm. uncle uh, told me, after my mom's passing, uh, told me, oh, why don't you come and try out Rwanda? So my Rwandan side of the family had moved here, or the first family was able to move here, uh, to move back here in uh, around 1998. Mm. Uh, so he, he he told me to, you know, come out and try out Randa. Uh, I came uh, to try out Randa, and uh, almost a decade later, uh, I'm still here. <laughs> At least most of my shoes are here. Um, yeah, I mean, was that your first time coming to Rwanda as well? No, so I'd come to visit. Mm. 
uh, as a young kid, my uncle's wedding, my aunt, auntie's wedding as well. Um, yeah, I came, checked out the place. Everything was in French. So mm -hmm. I was <laughs> like, no. This is not for me. No, this is not for me. <laughs> uh, there was only like one mall oh, in the country. Good. Coming uh, from South Africa. It yeah. Have been. And UG, because I grew mm. up in Uganda as you well. Grew up in Uganda. Yeah. Uh, my closest friends are still there. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I looked at it uh, and was like, no, mom, uh, I don't think, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I don't think this works. But eventually uh, it worked for me. Uh, it has been very kind to me. Uh, I've been blessed. Uh, Rwanda is an amazing place for young people. Like if honestly, if you want to try out anything, this place gives you the room. To, to do that. To do that, to set the blueprint for whatever industry you want to be in. It could be hospitality. It could be a small startup. Yeah. Uh, it could be even a duka or, you know, mm. a small shop somewhere. Mm -hmm. Rwanda gives you the opportunity to try. So it, it goes down to your individuality, your persistence, mm. your discipline. Mm, your uh, discipline. Yeah, is very key in helping you succeed uh, in, in this place. And we've barely scratched the surface. Because uh, there's so much. There's so much potential. Yeah, Ever potential. since I've come here, it's just been very inspiring, really. It's been an inspiring journey. And uh, it's not just Randy's people that I'm interacting with. It's also very Pan-African, African representation. A, a lot of it is is right here. And uh, people are building some amazing things, especially here at North Skin. And amazing. So I, I believe you when you, mention, <laughs> when you say that you need to yeah. be in Rwanda and build whatever it is that you have the passion to do that, to do. So, okay, so you're living in... you. You know, you're in South Africa, you know, Uganda, you're being told maybe come check out Rwanda. So what was that? First of all, you didn't even, you said your background is in... Uh, quantitative economics. Quantitative then economics. I did, then I did communications. Then uh, you did communications. When I moved here, I was doing a lot of, I was doing TV work uh, and uh, radio, radio work. And I joined Norskin as a comms and uh, marketing lead. Uh, mm. And then eventually mm. six months in, I moved to ecosystems and partnerships. Sorry, what what was it that your background was in quantitative economics and then you shift, but you still have this media thing going on? Yep. I want to know about that balance or that complete shift of you deciding to pursue quantitative economics, but having this, you know, media kind of personality and studying media and marketing. And what was the shift and what was that experience like, you know, doing that shift and even making the decision to make that shift? Uh, good question. So, um, I've never been asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it came so naturally for me uh, mm -hmm. because you look at the low hanging fruit, right? When I moved, when I moved to Kigali, um, radio stations never used to. So, sports is the most listened to thing on radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I used to listen to this radio station called Radio Ten. Mm -hmm. And they had a sports show, which was the most popular sports show. Shout out to Jadoka Star and David Bain, an amazing show. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to listen to this show, uh, so I could barely speak the language. But with time, you start picking up beats mm -hmm. here and there. Mm -hmm. And you would take, I would take morning walks, which I still talk to now, and you would find everyone with a radio. Mm -hmm. Or on their phone. Mm -hmm. And they're all, listening they're all listening to the same show. So I was like, what is with this show? <laughs> and I'm very inquisitive. Like, mm -hmm. I really, really uh, love learning new things. Mm -hmm. So eventually I find out it's a sports show, and I'm trying to look for an English sports show on radio, and I couldn't find an couldn't English find sports it. show. So I walked to Radio 10. I tell these guys, hey, I can do radio. You walked into Radio yeah. <laughs> 10. I didn't have an appointment with wow. anyone. I didn't know anyone. Uh, and these guys are like, no, you don't have an appointment. Then the lady, she was so kind, who was at the reception. She's like, oh, by the way, that's the general manager. So there was this uh, gentleman called Pierre Cedric mm. Louis. Um, so I tell him, hey, I can do radio. <laughs> He's like, no, you can't. <laughs> so here is this young 21 year old who oh you know who has walked in and saying hey I can do radio. He's like no you can't do radio. I'm like no no you don't have an English sports show. Wow. 
He was like, yeah, we don't. Uh, the market doesn't need it. I'm like, give me a chance. He looks at me, uh, just like this poor young man. Oh I think I must God. have looked very malnourished and stuff. <laughs> He's just trying to put food on the table. Yeah, I try to get something to do for myself. I walk. He, he, he tells another manager within the station, he's like, okay, give him a voice test. Mm. I go up. As you can hear, my voice is not radio voice. It's not that deep, <laughs> God's voice that everyone has, you know, that, that radio yeah. voice. Yeah. So I go up to do a voice test. And in there, I meet Jado Kastari and David. And these guys were looked at as gods in the wow. industry. So I talked to David and Jado. I'm like, hey, uh, I could add something to your show. They're like, who's this <laughs> kid? They're like, you know, what, what do you think you can add? First of all, you <laughs> even being allowed to even get there was another thing. No, mm -hmm. God's blessings. God's blessings. God's blessings. Because mm -hmm. who am I to just have access <laughs> like that? <laughs> you know. Yeah, so David's like, what can you bring to the show? I'm like, David, you don't talk about cycling, you don't talk about rugby, you don't talk about cricket. So growing up as a child, uh, I watched a lot of sports. Mm. And uh, I later figured out in life that my mother would put the parental guidance key on the DSTV. So the only thing I used to have access to were super sports channels and news channels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back in the day, Mnet, Movie Magic, yes. they, they showed uh, a lot of different things. <laughs> um, yeah, so mom never wanted me to watch those movies. Mm -hmm. So I ended up watching a lot of sports, but every weekend I used to be engaged in some form of sporting activity. So I would either be at a badminton tournament, swimming mm -hmm. competition, mm -hmm. football, Kampala Kids League. And so, yeah, I was always busy. So that background came into play, uh, being that I, I knew a bit about, about all these sports, the sports and I just didn't know them. I really knew them deeply. Yeah, so David, I tell him, um, you guys don't talk about cycling and don't talk about mm -hmm. rugby, you don't talk about cricket on your show. He's like, you can talk about these things. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So Jado walks to me and is like, okay, tell me what's going on right now. So I tell him, Yo, right now there's um, the Ashes. So mm -hmm. the Ashes were happening in uh, Australia at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, annual cricket uh, matches, test matches between England and Australia. And it's like the Ashes are happening right now. Uh, Tour de France is also happening. Uh, there's a whole Chris Froome controversy around mm -hmm. it as well. He's like, mm, cool, come tomorrow. We'll give you five minutes towards the end of the show. Next day I went there, they gave me five minutes on their show. The five minutes later turned into 10. A month later I had my own show on Saturday. So wow. yeah, first of all, it's let me just the audaciousness of you being able to just say, let me go to this place and try my my yeah. luck. I think not many people have that, you know. I think I think, I think I grew up very brave. You grew up very brave. Very brave. And, and you know, it's, it's that thing. The only shots you miss are the ones you didn't take. You didn't take. Right, so. I'm oh assuming, oh, you have to write an email. Or you have to do this. Sometimes just try. I'm always shooting my shot. Sana, everywhere. Everywhere. I'm always shooting my shot. Like, yeah. you try. And the only thing you're going to pick up from uh, failing is a lesson. A lesson or the worst is gonna be a no. A no, yeah, and that no is a lesson in itself of, yes. okay, cool. The reason why person X, Y, Z saying no is because maybe I didn't approach them properly. Mm -hmm. So it ends up building your mental muscle, mm -hmm. which gives you the intuition now about things. So even when you're having small talk with a person, it, it's easy for you subconsciously to see an opportunity, one, or two, to see where you could help, three, what is the direction? What is the benefit? What's the purpose, right? Because mm. uh, there's this funny saying of um, uh, energy is wasted on the youth, right? So young people, we end up thinking we're the first ones to do A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. And yet, mm. more or less, uh, the time we're repeating a pattern. Mm. This stuff has been done before. Mm -hmm. It's just a change in the environment, right? Mm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an ardent reader. And you will find out that from books that even when you look at the different levels of activism happening right now globally, you're like, this stuff has been done way, way before. So only a fool nothing will, new nothing new under the sun. So only a fool is going to repeat the same pattern that will lead to the same result. Mm -hmm. So then how do you do it differently? You need to have those experiences to change your perspective. Without a doubt. And I a thousand percent believe in the same philosophy as well. For me, I, as well, shooting my shot is not something that 
I struggle with too much. And every time I've done it, there's always something I pick from it, whether it's a no or a yes, okay. or even just me being in Kigali and just saying, okay, they're going to do interviews. And then if it was hard to reach you, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and so, no, we're here. Happy. We're here. <laughs> we're here. So now you have your own radio show. How long did that run for? And then what made you feel the need to have a change? And maybe, I don't know what your next move was. Yeah, from um, so I have two personal dreams, uh, which is a successful media company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason for that is um, when we can control our narrative, but from a point of trust and authority, right? So basically just not pr Just not PR. Yeah, no, we, we don't have to paint over uh, certain uh, breakages that we may have. So having a trustable African media house are telling the African narrative is very right. key. Because if we have trusted media sources, it, we create our own heroes. If we can control the narratives around who our heroes are, it inspires the next generation. It does. Uh, there's a reason as to why many Americans believe in, quote unquote, the American dream, right? American, the American dream. American dream. And we forget that some of the poorest populations in the world are also American. They live in the United States. They, they live in the U.S. Yeah. Mm. But we don't see that image of, of them. Of America. Yeah. We, the image of America that is painted is, you know, it's the best place it's to the live best. in the, the world. It's the land of opportunities, exactly. so they say. And yet the real land of opportunities is here. It's that on is this, true. It's on this continent. But it's because the narrative have been, has been written for us and not by us. Yes. Um, then it makes things different. So spaces like this, right? Uh, these podcast spaces, us having our own mediums, it inspires the next generation. We sell and we talk about the African dream. We can show where the African opportunity. So you don't have to have young Africans, uh, you know, getting onto a boat to go overseas or to go to the West when someone can cross from Libya to Kigali and start afresh yeah. in Rwanda, right? Yeah. They can cross over from Addis Ababa to, yeah. to Kigali and start afresh from Brazzaville, from anywhere on this continent. We can just move within our spaces, right? We move within our spaces. Intra-Africa regional trade is the least in the world. Which is the saddest part. Sad. But I also feel it's because of maybe, like you said, okay, maybe now there's this agreement that allows foreigners or people from other Af- African countries to come and set base without having to pay extra taxation and everything. But it's also just the accessibility of it all, you know, flights to different countries across Africa are expensive compared to going to yep. Europe or... But why um, so? Why is that? Lack of access to information is key, right? Because mm-hmm. if... So many times you'll talk to authorities and some of them are not even aware that we have double taxation systems. Mm. So why is it that a flight from Kigali to Nairobi is the most expensive flight in the world for its distance? Mm -hmm. If we speak more on these things, things will change. Things start changing. Things start changing. People are voicing. Yes. Leadership is aware Mm -hmm. of some of these things. And Mm -hmm. these are the things hindering us and trying to stop us from trading with each other. Right. So uh, if, if, if people have access to information, right, uh, and the information is by people, by them, but also trusted, because trust is key. Trust is key. Uh, then we can create our own heroes. By creating our own heroes, we inspire the next generation, right? So every generation, I believe, has a role to play. There was the first generation which, you know, had to get us political liberation mm-hmm. uh, as a continent. Mm-hmm. Some countries, it came earlier than others. Uh, Rwanda... Political liberation only came in 1994, uh, which was just yesterday, 28, 29 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so then what's the next step in the journey for us as a continent? Economic liberation, right? Less wow. dependency yeah. uh, on the West. And that's where the second dream comes in of investment funding and the investment space. So for me to understand that, I needed to work in the investment fund and investment uh, space. So fast forward, no skin. For the media space, uh, previously with CNBC and, you know, we tried to push or we tried to create the narratives, but understanding that. So through CNBC, that's where the K Financial Dream also came up of let's build an African media platform for Africans. Mm-hmm. Sorry, taking you back for CNBC. So this was this is where you moved to after doing the radio show. Yes. Um, and where was CNBC based? Here in Kigali? Here in Kigali. Okay. Uh, I was, you know, lead anchor and uh, hosted a show known as Closing Bell, uh, East Africa. And 
we were largely you know, talking about Africa's finances, Africa's mm -hmm. economy. I think mean, that you see the opportunities, but also with these places to whom much is given, much is expected. Yes. So you, you, you have a seat at the table that mm -hmm. previously someone your age would not have. Mm -hmm. You don't take that for granted. You do not take. Yeah. So one of the mistakes we make in the media space is we think we need to be either or, right? It's white or black. Uh, of either I'm going to be, for lack of a better word, kiss ass and be the nice guy yeah. to whatever to CEO get to win, or, yeah, so that maybe I can rise through the ranks. Media doesn't really, really pay well, right? Mm -hmm. and, unless you're at the top of at the, the food, top of the, yeah. of the food chain. Or we think, you know what, I'm going to be the hard guy. Yeah, let me be uh, very antagonizing and let me be controversial. Let me always be the guy asking yeah, the hard questions. You have to have a niche that yeah. is very rigorous. <sighs> Actually, someone gave me advice when I was, you know, scaling this podcast. Sorry to divers to the no, no, to no, no, right? um, After season one, and she asked me like, "What is going to be your unique selling point?" And she's a she's a really big journalist. Has gone through the ranks. And her advice to me was. You need to have an angle. Ask the hard questions that is going to give you that unique niche. You know, the questions that people are not... Basically, be that hard-on person. But I also just wanted to have an angle of... I want to build meaningful relationships with the guests that I also have and not bash them with, so why did you... Yeah, like, but, but, but where did you draw the, draw the line and draw the boundaries? So let's, so, say, yes. let's say Arnold did something controversial, right? Yes. And you need to ask me about of it. Of course. Right? Well, at the same time, you don't want to offend me. Yes. I about that so it's, uh, getting into that nice. space mm. i think behind it all uh, and this is for me yeah right? behind it all is what is the end goal what do i want to gain from abcd mm -hmm. by gain i mean my audience or whoever is going to be watching me yeah what is that one thing that they will learn mm. today right mm. so if we're talking about economics how do I make mathematics or the numbers easy to understand, yeah. sexy for yeah. a 10-year-old, cool. yeah. right? For an 11-year-old, if we're talking about the monetary policy statement, how do you make that understandable for everyone? Everybody. And for, especially starting from the younger generation because it's good for them to understand and grow up with it so that yeah. they are able to make those decisions while they grow up and become, you know, and not be part of the negative financial, you know, and, and so, so, so many times you find that many of us in the industry, mm -hmm. you know, want to use big words or we want to look a certain way mm. for us so that people can tell that we are educated or we have an understanding of our subjects better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. No, the story is not about me. The story is about what the audience learns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So best of that, that's where the dream of, the, of building the K-Financial yes. uh, started. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has grown into its own thing, you know, yeah. a team now of uh, eight people across Africa uh, producing daily financial news. And, you know, God, God has also blessed me, <laughs> so yeah. I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's my responsibility because I've been blessed to have this knowledge. Then how do we pass it on? But then how do you also create a well-oiled drilled machine mm -hmm. that in the future yeah. these people can replicate similar things? elsewhere right so the pie is big enough for everyone mm -hmm. uh we all can thrive we all can we all succeed can. uh there's a reason as to why some people have 20 30 tv stations in one country and all are successful we can also it's, do the it same. It doesn't always have to be a competition, but no. a collaboration into having the same mission of, you know, educating people and putting the narrative, creating our own narratives, yep. which is what you mentioned. One of your main goals is, and maybe you can tell us where we can get access to the media outlets for the K. Ah, oh, the K Financial. K Just financial. check out the K Financial dot com. Uh, the K Financial on Twitter X. It's Twitter X now. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Twitter X. <laughs> me, anyway. Instagram and all those things. <laughs> Daily podcast. Good morning, Africa. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I think next, I, I want to also just come back to the Norskin um, initiative as well. Is what is the process of applying, and how can I, as someone who's maybe looking into getting to the program, how can I do that? Even if I'm in a different country, what's the process? So it depends on where you want to be in in regards to the program. So we have to be a member of Norskin, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you just apply through our website, uh, norskinfoundation.org. You check Gali House. 
there's uh, an application form to be a member. Application fees are very affordable. Uh, sorry, our membership fees. There's no application <laughs> fee. Uh, our membership fees are very affordable. Uh, you know, it ranges from $50 to $120, which is the cheapest for a hub mm. anywhere in East Africa. Mm. And uh, the reason as to why we make it as affordable as possible is to be able to attract mm. people who have dreams, ideas, who want to work from an environment of uh, similar people uh, who will not only give them the connects mm -hmm. or contacts in the startup space mm -hmm. uh, that could get them potential funding, scalability, learning from each other, mm -hmm. but also um, we try to make sure that everyone is included, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, if the fee is anything higher, then it excludes, it excludes a certain people. group of people. Yeah. And we want everyone to be included. Mm -hmm. And $50 is not cheap mm -hmm. in Africa. It's, 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 it's above a daily poverty line. So $50 per month is, is, is quite something. It is. Uh, and so we try to make sure that uh, we even have programs whereby no one pays a cent. Mm -hmm. So we get partners on board. We have a very good women in business initiative. Uh, that has been taking place, uh, which we, part we, we have a partner for that. And we get uh, over 20 companies, uh, women-led or women-founded companies, mm -hmm. uh, some of them without any background in tech. Mm. And uh, they, you know, they go through our program, which is the basics, how to set up uh, a good business proposal, how do you write a pitch deck, how do you scale a, a business, you know, packaging for your business, what do you need to do? Mm -hmm. Then... We give them an opportunity through various mediums, right? Okay. To how do you write a marketing plan? Which marketing outlets do you need to talk to? How do you pitch? How do you have a two minutes uh, elevator pitch co conversation? How do you even dress? Things that we look at are, that are very basic, but uh, could uh, help someone give them that leapfrog. They need to get their business to that next level. Okay. I like that explanation that you've given us. I think it gives us a really good overview of what your mission here at North Kenyan is and how someone can be a part of the initiative. I think we're about to close off this episode, but I think my last question before I get to my closing questions would be, you know, what what next for Arnold or what do you think you're... Contributing to, to Africa's uh, startup ecosystem and... Uh, Ensuring that we get, you know, we attract the right investment. North Skin Africa Week is coming up. Hopefully Ooh. you're in Kigali. What uh, happens in North Skin Africa Week? So it's going to be the first of its kind where we're bringing uh, the world's leading investors and Africa's uh, biggest or best entrepreneurs all wow. under one roof uh, for a period of about two to three days. And... You know, you bring the best of this, of both worlds. Capital oh. meets innovation. I'm already feeling formal. <laughs> 8th and 9th November, being Kigali. 8th and 9th November. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll being Kigali. Yeah, I got you. I got, your ticket is there. Uh, and uh, so what we want to do with that is if we're able to bring the best of both worlds together, then uh, one most African startup founders are uh, are really looking for is that capital. They need yes. that deal flow. Yeah. They need that runway. You need money to make more money. You need money to make more money. Yeah, so if they can just get a breather, mm. runway for about, many of our startups need like runway for about 12 months mm. to be able to take that next step, mm -hmm. right? Because for you to create that MVP, for you to create uh, those products, it needs money. It does. Uh, and all the people at home, who need to be fed mm -hmm. right? and you need to put food on the table and that mm -hmm. requires money yeah. and that uh, gives you the peace of mind which allows you to innovate yeah. and create and but create. even to just push through mm -hmm. yeah to 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 uh, to to learn from your mistakes yeah. as well it gives you some form of freedom so we want to create that space yeah and not be punished for a mistake that maybe you have made because your lack of because you lack, lack of funding, funding. Right. yeah no i think uh, funding is the most important part of a startup. Okay, not of course not the most important. The most important is the solution that you're trying to build and then being able to sell the vision that you have to other people to want to invest in you. Yep. And so I'm happy that not you know Norskin is giving that opportunity to entrepreneurs or people who are building building solutions, being, making a meaning out of um, building 
solutions that are meaningful to whatever markets that they're targeting and uh, the pan-Africanism here is strong and um, you know I'm just very excited to see what the journey has in store for us hopefully we will be back in Kigali as well for that Inshallah. week and uh, we're able to really just I, I also want to be part of just being a, do the contribution that I can by having this space as my text story Africa to show the to and I think one of my main goals is to increase the adaptation rate and just process those t those complicated technological terms that are being used by everyday engineers and whatnot to to be palatable to the everyday consumer. Uh, so that we are able to adapt to the products that are actually being built because, you know, the first thing is the solution, the second thing is the funding, the third thing is for people to actually use the product that yep. you're you are selling. So, um, yeah, I am also hopefully doing my part by also interviewing someone from Norskin to share that information. Now, thank so you that for, for coming builders. and for being part of, uh, <laughs> of this ecosystem that we're trying to build. Yes. So definitely we'll see you here in yes. November for yes. Norskin I'm Africa Week. My calendars, yeah. I shall do my best to be here. Yeah, and we'll do this again just in a bigger scale so without uh, a doubt without a doubt well thank you so much for giving thank you for having us platform. i think i just have four closing questions that i asked all my guests before we um close off the episode and mm -hmm. the first one i have for you is what word would you describe the journey that got you where you are today and why blessed 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 you have mentioned that quite a bit <laughs> yeah, in um, personal conversation no because um one, we create our own luck, right? But oh. then, as you create your own luck, for certain doors to be open for you, mm -hmm. I look at my story, you know, being an orphan, a single child. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, you know, I look at the life I live, the doors that are open for me, the people that trust me, right? Uh, it's Those are blessings. It is a blessing. Those are blessings. You know, and we are so happy to celebrate you as an African doing the great things that you're doing. So, <laughs> and blessed is a good term to use. And yeah, we celebrate you. Thank you. The second question I have for you is, what advice would you give to someone who's aspiring to get to where you are today? It don't take no for an answer. It don't take no for an answer, as in, show up. Show up. Show, showing up is the most important part of the day. And then don't be entitled to people's time. Mm. Don't be entitled at all. Just show up and don't expect anything to be given to you. Like the days when you're going to show up and no one is going to even know it's your day. Just show up. Just show up. Wow, well, I think that's a very powerful message right there. And uh, I think the third question I have for you is, do you have any regrets or something that you wish you would have done differently in your journey? Regrets, no. Lessons, yes. Uh, but uh, if there's one thing I wish I had is if my mom was here with me. That's my only wish. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, I know she's happy looking over you and how much you've already done. Inshallah. Hopefully, I hope she's happy. Uh, Alhamdulillah. But uh, yeah, um, learning. Mm. Learning, learning. Every day, is in, there's, a, there's definitely a new lesson. Mm. Yeah every day mm -hmm. and at times it's from people who society would look at as lesser than you but uh, those guys tend to have the real deal man and mm -hmm. they, they yeah uh raw and shay and they are they're some of the best people all right yeah so learning from anyone and everyone every day learning from anyone and everyone every day all right and the last question i have for you is well it's not really a question but it's I want you to close off the episode with a powerful parting shot that you want to. Oof, uh, what's the pressure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the pressure? What's the pressure? What's the pressure? Um, powerful parting shot. Ah, damn. Now, um, I think you just need to bet on yourself. You need to bet on yourself. You need to bet on yourself. Um, no one's coming to save me. Right. Um, and in case you have someone who's coming to save you, if you have a silver spoon, turn it into gold. There's nothing. Turn it into gold, right? And if you have a golden spoon, make it diamond. And if it's diamond, make it platinum. Like, there's always a better there's level. Something. Yeah, uh, it's, you have to set goals for yourself that are just going to make you a better person every day and each day. Mm -hmm. And then, never revenge. Never revenge. I honestly don't even have space for it in your head like if someone or if you are in a situation that has hurt you or has set you back 
pray about it, meditate, move on. Because that's so much negative energy to keep within you. Protect your peace and always surround yourself with positive energy. Always. Mm. Yourself with positive energy. Yeah. And people hold you accountable mm -hmm. to, you know, to a better standard than it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mediocrity is a drug. Ooh, yeah, it's comfortable. Mediocrity, mediocrity is, a drug. is a drug. Yeah, it's very yes. comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Wow, I think that's the best way you can end the episode, you know, with everything that you've just said. I want to thank you once again for joining us. I think this has been a very eye-opening uh, episode, especially because you're more or less in a space where it's relatable to me because I think it's also the journey that I am working towards you know media communications and whatnot so i am very happy to see what you're doing and i'm hoping you i'm wishing for nothing but the best for you as you keep progressing as you keep elevating as you keep not conforming to mediocrity and you know doing what needs to be done to improve the african landscape whether it's in a tech or financial space so Happy to have had this conversation with you, Alice. And for you as the listener, please make sure that you subscribe, listen, follow, share, do everything that you need to do to support this podcast. Your support means a lot because it gives us, it gets us one step closer into putting the message out there and to letting more people know about the amazing things that are happening in the African tech landscape today. My name is Alice Kandijo. I have been your lovely host, and our guest today has been Arnold Quizara. I think we should leave some important links just so people can reach out, can follow you on your media. To the X. <laughs> I don't even to know what it is now. <laughs> no, yeah, everywhere. To the X, and as well as the platforms that you're spearheading um, for the financial markets out there in the African space. So, yes, I shall see you in the next episode. Next week, we're back with another banging episode. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.